From the beginning of his time on Earth, man has always been fascinated by monsters, real or imagined. One enduring modern legend tells of creatures similar to man, walking upright, covered with hair, beast-like in character. Many believe they are real and exist today in the remote corners of the world where they have been driven by encroaching civilization. They were first known as the Abominable Snowmen. He has spent the last 20 years of his life searching for a creature so elusive that few have ever seen its tracks, and even fewer, the creature itself. come close to the creature on more than one occasion. He has never actually seen the sure-footed beast that has been glimpsed in primitive surroundings. But as civilization pushes deeper into the wilderness, Byrne believes a confrontation with man is inevitable. The civilized world first became aware of such creatures when stories began to drift back from travelers in the remote Himalayas. As early as 1857, giant footprints were spotted. In 1906, a man-like creature walking upright on two legs was seen in Sikkim by English explorer H.J. Elwes. But the subject was not taken seriously until a group of British climbers attempted to be the first to reach the top of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. In 1953, Queen Elizabeth's coronation in London was matched by news that Edmund Hillary's expedition, led by Colonel John Hunt, had reached the summit of Mount Everest. Later, headlines stated that the expedition had sighted footprints of some enormous two-footed creature, and sent back photographs to prove it. The world was fascinated. The creature was dubbed the abominable snowman, and he became a household word. In 1953, Peter Byrne was one of those who heard the stories and was attracted to the subject. He made his first trek into the Himalayas. To be involved in the hunt, he had to abandon one career to begin another. He left the Royal Air Force and worked in Darjeeling, northern India. While I was there, I became interested in big game hunting. Tiger, leopard, buffalo. And we hunted in the dense jungles that run along the edge of the Himalayan foothills. Then, in 1968, he stopped. He simply did not want to destroy beautiful animals just to put them on a wall as a trophy. I left hunting and went into conservation wildlife conservation. I could never kill again. Because of his expertise in tracking animals, he was a natural choice to lead the first scientific search for the abominable snowman, an expedition financed by Texas oil millionaire Tom Slick. Slick was killed in a plane crash, but by that time, Byrne had caught the snowman fever and has devoted his life to the search. This is uh, the greatest hunt that anyone could ever go on. A mysterious creature, uh, elusive, uh, shy, uh, nocturnal, um, living in an enormous area of extremely difficult terrain. And uh, it's, a, it's a near impossible dream to see one of these creatures would be like uh, meeting a man uh, stepping out of the primeval world, um, a prehistoric being. It would be like reaching back into the past. This is what keeps me going. This is the spur. The search has taken him into some of the most spectacular scenic areas of the world. To 
breathtaking vistas of natural beauty. They alone make the search worthwhile. It is here that Byrne believes the man-beast will be found. Here in the Himalayas, at the very roof of the world, Mount Everest itself. Many believe the abominable snowman originated in Nepal and Tibet, migrated northwest into China, and eventually crossed over the frozen Bering Straits into Alaska, continuing down into the Pacific Northwest. In the Museum of the University of British Columbia, Peter studies American Indian legends which tell of a similar creature the Indians call Sasquatch, the same man-beast called Bigfoot today. The Indians had no doubt he existed, and as they did with all living things, they treated Sasquatch with respect. Sacred totems symbolize the Indians' deep reverence for nature. They accorded to all living things a divine spirit. Theirs has always been a, a reverence for life. To them, the Sasquatch was no imagined demon. If we are to convince modern science that the man-beast exists, we must learn how it lives and where it hides.